What's up, guys? Um, I've been getting a question a lot recently where the answer always seemed to be learn music theory. And once I tell people to learn music theory, they're always like, oh, what's a good resource for me to learn music theory at? And I just realized I don't really know a good resource because I just kind of learned it over the years from trial and error. And I figured, you know, it's really not hard to learn. Once you learn it, you'll never get beat block again. And um, I can probably explain it in under 20 minutes and make it pretty easy. And if I make this video, I could just send it to anybody who has this question for me. So yeah, let's uh, let's go about learning some music theory today. Now, obviously I can't encompass all of music theory into a video under 20 minutes of length, but I can get you all the essentials you need to as a producer that you're ever gonna use. And we're gonna get pretty advanced in it at some points. If you wanna call it advanced, I don't really see other people like talking about like this type of stuff, but um, it's gonna be pretty easy to learn. So just pay attention and you'll get it. So I actually made a project file and um, I'll try to see if I can make this available to everybody in the description so they can go through it and check it out. But I think this project file encompasses pretty much every single uh, type of technique you'll need to learn in order to learn music theory. So first up are the basics, you know, the stuff that everybody covers. I've already covered in other tutorials, but um, just um, how to make a chord. So we're in the C minor scale right now. And as you can see, all the notes in the scale are highlighted like this. And basically to make a chord in a minor and major scale, you just have to skip the notes. So like skip this one, skip this one, and bam, bam you've got yourself a C minor triad. It's a minor because bam, bam. one, two, three, it's right there. It's on the third, like step up. This is called the third. Um, now, if it was to, were to be a major chord, it would have to be like this on the four. I've covered this before. Most people have covered it. I don't want to go spend too long on this. So that's how you make your chords. They just kind of, you skip every note in the scale, or, you know, if it's a minor chord, it's right here on the three right here. It's on the four for a major chord. And you can continue the pattern to keep going up forever and ever. And that's, what's really important to know is that this can go to right here, which is known as a seventh chord right here, a ninth chord right here, an 11th chord now you're here, a 13th chord. And um, that's pretty much all you need to know about forming a chord. So here's a little extra information. A minor chord can be typically described as sad or, you know, um, just like down. And then a major chord can be described as like happy and like up, you know, like uplifting and stuff like that. Um, so it's good to know those vibes. And it's also important to note that as you go up to like more crazy, they're called like jazzier type chords, like seventh chord or ninth chord, that you're going to kind of like fuse the, the mix of like happy and sad a little bit, get more melancholic type vibes. And so like, here's a seventh chord, a minor, a C minor seventh. And now the reason it sounds so like melancholic is because it contains, here's the minor chord and uh, it contains a C minor triad and it also contains a D sharp major triad. So as you can see, like here's your major, here's your minor. It's kind of like clashing those two emotions. So it's always good to know that like as you add more notes to your chords, you're kind of creating more complex emotions and something a little bit more interesting. Now, it is very important to understand the terminology that makes up at least a triad. So you have what's known as your root note, which is the bottom note of the chord, your third, which is that middle tone, and then you have your fifth. Now, your root and your fifth are super important as we get uh, deeper into this video, and it's really important that you know what your root and your fifth are. So once you know the principles of how a chord is made, you must understand that most mainstream music, pop and hip hop, utilize only the basic major and minor triads and um, that they make them interesting with inversions. So now um, what's an inversion? You can invert the root note up an octave so that the third is the new bass like this. You can take the uh, fifth and you can uh, put, bring that down so it's the new bass. Or you can even like make your chord a lot fuller and wider and take your third and make it go up or down. So all that stuff's been covered by other YouTubers before. So let's get into more interesting details. Let's talk about bass notes when you're creating your bass line. When you're creating a bass line with a chord, there's pretty much only two notes that are gonna sound good. And it's gonna sound good when you land on either the root or the fifth of the chord. So you only have two possible options when you play a bass note at the same time as a new chord. For example, let's create a little two chord progression right here. So like something like this. So now here's our two chords. For our bass line, this is a C minor triad. This is an A sharp major triad. You can go C to A sharp. But what also sound good is going to the fifth. So we can also go to this F. 
Now that sounds good. Now the the third tone will work in some cases, but for the most part, you're gonna want to use that third as like a transitiony type note. So um, let's hear what let's just hear what it sounds like. If we go to the D. It still works, but there's a lot of tension when you land on it at the same time as a new chord. So let's kind of use this as a like a transitiony type note. So let's make the bass line a little more complex. We can go G, and then maybe like D like this, and then we'll go up to the F. So as you can see, that works right there. It works much better as a transition note than if we were to say start on the D sharp. A lot of tension right there. So again, for most of your, since we're only going to be using triads in most uh, pop and hip hop, you're going to want your bass notes to only be your root or your fifth to land on, but you can use the other tones in the chord as transition notes. So now we're gonna get a little bit more advanced. I've kind of transposed all the chords down an octave and I made a different rhythm. So now we can really hear the bass tones. Now what's interesting is that for your bass line, you might have seen some people, so maybe some YouTubers, when they're making their bass lines, they don't just use maybe the C or the G, they'll use a different note and it'll sound good. Now why does this different note sound good? And that's because they're probably playing the 7th, the ninth, or the 11th, or even the 13th tone. And it actually works good maybe as like a transition-y note or something in that bass line. So let me give you an example. So right now we've got this C, we've got this G, and then we've got it going to an F. But um, let's add something that isn't from this chord. So we can go up to this A sharp, skip a note. We can go this D, we can go to this F. So let's just choose one of those. So we're gonna choose the D. So if we go like this. So it kind of works in the bass line, like with that chord. In addition, we could have also gone to say this A sharp. So we can go like. And I actually like that a lot. I prefer it over the D, but it works because it is the seventh tone of this chord. Um, so now we're going down to this F. Let's just uh, finish it off something over here. Super, super weird. So let's go seventh, ninth, eleventh. Let's do the let's do the eleventh, and let's put that right here. So that actually finishes the, the bass line really nicely for these two chords. And to think that D sharp would work even though it's right next to that D. Maybe it's not gonna work in all cases, but the reason I'm telling you guys why it works is because it actually is a part of this pattern if you keep skipping these notes. So that's really important to know if you wanna go like a little bit more um, complex with your bass lines, you can, instead of like going aimlessly across the, the scale trying to find something that works, you can just know, okay, well, I didn't, I wanna do something different than these. Skip, skip, skip. I'll choose one of these three notes. Now this same rule that we just applied to the bass lines applies to the melodies as well, except there's a little bit more freedom and I'll show you what I mean by that. So um, let's just go up here and now that we're, we have like a nice frequency gap between like our lower notes and our new melody, just know that like this difference in frequencies, you have more freedom of um, being able to use different notes in the scale without muddying it up. So let's just make something real quick. So we'll start on the C and then we'll go down to the A sharp because if you remember A sharp is the seventh and um, and then we can maybe go down to a note in the scale like D sharp. And then we'll go down to this C. So these three notes, all in that chord, you know to use them, it's fine. Um, this one is just the seventh tone. Um, and then let's let's do something else. So you go to the ninth, the D. And let's do something really crazy for this chord. So seventh, ninth, 11. Um, Let's see, 13th. Let's do the 13th for this. Now remember the 13th might not have sounded really good in the bass line, but we've got so much like frequency space right here that it, it might sound good like this. And then we'll just end it on another D sharp at the end. Now that sounds dope and that sounds really interesting. And the reason it works again is it just follows this skipping pattern and it's the uh, 13th of that chord. Um, but now you're probably wondering, now PJ, doesn't like if you just keep skipping notes for a long enough time, aren't you just going to get all the notes in the scale? Because look, we go right back to A sharp again and then back to the D. So yes, that is true. You know, if you just keep skipping notes, you're going to go back in the scale. And that's why lots of YouTube producers will say when they do their melodies, they just stick to the scale. 
and the reason i'm just telling you this is why the scale works this is why you can use all these weird notes that you're like huh why did this weird note work but like if i went to f it was just boring but that g is really interesting you know and the reason that g is interesting it does it's not part of the core is just because if you keep following this pattern it gets you to that G. So basically, when you're making melodies, you have a lot more freedom to use these 7s, 9s, 11s, or 13th tones. Now, just a little other useful tip of what you can do with these um, these notes. Because again, if everything in the scale works per se, then um, why would you choose some notes that are the, uh, over others? And that's just because some notes are going to sound better than others. And other notes are going to be really good, again, as like little transition notes, little accents. You would like to buy a M. Something where like you might see like um I don't know like maybe Nick Mirror or someone like they'll probably like have like a little note right here maybe they'll unquantize it and they'll make it really tiny and it'll go into that note and it sounds really good as one of those but maybe not so good as it if it was just like really like emphasized and made like um had a, like a long sustain and stuff like that so it's important to note that these ones that don't really work too well could actually really spice up your melody as little accents and like transitions. So now, believe it or not, we actually uh, covered all the music theory you'll ever need to never get beat block again. The only thing I maybe didn't uh, touch on that I would have liked to is using notes outside of the scale. But that's a little bit more complex for me to explain considering I don't have a professional musical uh, background or anything. I just kind of... Um, like know all this just from like trial and error over the years but basically when i use notes outside the scale what i'll do is like um typically like that's usually i'll find a chord progression i like i'll be like oh this chord progression the notes in these chords don't confine to any scale like i'll use a scale finder website and what i'll do is i'll just take like whatever scale that contains a majority of the notes from the chords and i'll call it that scale so let's say we were using this c minor scale like how i was here but somehow one of my chords ended up having a uh I don't know, like a B in it or something. Well, I'll still call this this, even though like that maybe not that, that that maybe isn't a scale that exists. I'll still call this like a C minor scale, and I'll use notes in the scale, like when the chords contain notes from the scale. But when I get to that chord that contains like the funky B note, but it still sounds good, I only stick to notes in that chord. If that makes any sense, so I kind of play it safe when I go to notes outside the scale, and um, I think you should too. And for the most part, just stick to the scales. So now you may be wondering, PJ, you always compose records, but other producers, they just click in. Why does their stuff sound good? Well, they're actually doing literally exactly what I'm doing right here. Um, so what I mean by that is they have a top leg melody. They'll probably have a bass line. They'll have their chords in, contained in it, but they just probably don't articulate their chords where all the notes are hitting at the same time. They may be like have their progressions arpeggiated. So what you could do to kind of achieve like a more sound like that is um, like, so let's say if you started composing the way I just composed, like, I'm just arpeggiating the chord and our chord arpeggiation is when you just um, stick to the notes in the chord to make a new melody. So like right there, I just went from C to D sharp to G to D sharp to G and we're going to go here and we'll end it on this. And then they probably also when they click in, they probably click in at like a, just a set length like this. So we'll just do shift D and we'll get a melody that sounds like this. What the? Oh. And that maybe doesn't sound too cool on a piano, but I mean, they'll probably, like, I'm sure it would sound dope on an Omnisphere bell or something. So let's just paste it. I have the Glockenspiel Dry preset right here. This is kind of like a high bell, so I'll drop it down an octave and see what it sounds like. That's a dope melody right there. So we just, I didn't even think this would like be pretty cool, but on the right instrument, this melody is pretty dope. So now I'm going to make this FLP project file available for you guys to study because I want you guys to really understand these concepts. So I've actually come up with two other examples besides the one I just did from the tut. Uh, this one is with chords. So it's basically the same thing I did before. I created a chord progression just by skipping notes and following notes in the C minor scale. And I created these chords. I've used some inversions on some of them. And I only stuck to triads. And then what I did is I created a bass line. At some, I used pretty much, I only landed on the root and the fifth. And then at some points I would use maybe the third or like the seventh or another tone as a like a kind of a um uh bleh transition note that's the word i was looking for so yeah like i would use like those extra tones as transition notes you guys could try to spot that and then same thing with the melody sticking to the notes uh that were in the chord and then maybe going out to like whatever it was the seventh or the ninth or something 
And so basically, I just want you guys to understand why all this stuff works the way it works. And then again, you guys, I made it, um, I copied the pattern and then I made the middle into an arpeggio an arpeggio so you can kind of hear what it sounds like as a regular thing and as an arpeggio and i did this two times so there's another example here and then that same other example is also arpeggiated and let's just hear what those sound like So the ones with the counter melodies, with the arpeggiated melodies, um, those are probably more like hip hop oriented. Like for most hip hop productions, they don't just leave the chords. People are just clicking it in. And to give you an idea of what like maybe these melodies sounded like in all in one file, like for a bell again, I got the glockenspiel dry. Here it is. Let me uh, do this. Sounds pretty dope. And let's do it for this one. See if it sounds dope too. Sounds dope. So yes, guys, that is it. You guys now know all of the music theory you'll ever need to never get beat block again. And um, just a little disclaimer, since you got, I'm gonna make that po that project file available. The MIDI's in that project file. The um, just basically the all around like orchestration of the melodies the key and everything you know it's kind of like think of it as like you're getting like a little for like free midi kit you know i mean i guess you could use it in your beats or something like that but um you know I w i'm gonna come for my credit if it gets placed okay and my percentage don't forget that yeah that's pretty much it let me know in the comments below if you guys think you learned anything and yeah i'm out peace